Hello and welcome to Info Simcoe. My name is Madison Fitzpatrick and today joining us in studio is Bridget from the Innisfil Seed Library. Hi Bridget, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about exactly what is the Innisfil Seed Library. So the Innisfil Seed Library is a um, seed lending program and we have a couple of locations at the Cookstown and Lakeshore branches of the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library. And they're our partner that really makes us able to do this program. And it's basically a um, browse, borrow and return model. So you get to browse through a selection of vegetable, herb and flower seeds and they're all donated by the community. Um, you grow them at home and enjoy them. So you grow your tasty produce and beautiful flowers that will attract pollinators to your garden. And then at the end of the season, we ask that you harvest some seeds and return them back to the seed library at either location. And um, that helps just to keep us local and sustainable. And we do know that for some people, gardening is a challenge, uh, both growing and maybe saving seeds. So we have really good resources. Uh, of course, the library has books on gardening. So you able to check those out and we have a really great resource website uh, which is innisfilseedlibrary.ca so you'll find you know all sorts of resources how to save how to grow um, any upcoming events that we have any programming so yeah it's it's a really fun engaging program and it's our eighth season that we're entering incredible I was gonna say how long yeah. um, has this been going on because I know during COVID a lot of people you know were bored I uh, wanted to find a new hobby and resorted back to kind of gardening and spending mm -hmm. time outside and things like that. So um, have you noticed an, an uptick in uh, gardening and in even, you know, making your own food and your own vegetables and things like that since the, the pandemic? Yes, absolutely. I mean, food security became an issue. I mean, even now, you know, lettuce costs a lot of money. Oh my gosh, um, yeah. <laughs> but one lettuce seed will produce hundreds of lettuce seeds at the end of the season. So, you know, just from a health perspective, of course, it's good to, to eat well and stuff you've grown, but the cost savings of saving your own seeds is amazing. So definitely during, during the pandemic, um, fortunately, we didn't shut down. We sort of moved to a mail out model. So people still got seeds. Um, we had enough seeds the fall prior in 2019 to be able to move ahead in 2020, 2021, uh, and, and you know, to be able to give people seeds. And many folks had never gardened before. But like you said, a lot of people were working from home or just wanted to try something new and gardening, kind of like baking bread, people were baking bread, oh, yeah. people were gardening. <laughs> so it, it definitely, um, I did see an uptick of folks coming uh, forward and also they're continuing, which is great. Now that you know, the world's opened up a bit more, they've now found a new passion. And um, you're telling us about resources that you guys have, you know, how, how do you properly garden, um, what to do with the seeds, you know, how to get seeds after you've mm -hmm. harvested. Um, are there any dangers to just kind of going in blindly and trying to do it by yourself? To save seeds? Yeah, or just to, to garden. You know. Well, I always tell people, you know, start start small, start easy, because sometimes you think I want to grow this giant vegetable garden and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you have you can grow a lot in a four by four plot. Um, just get some good uh, compost in there, some good triple mix. You can get those, you know, by, by the bag uh, and you can grow so much. I always encourage folks to grow beans. They're so easy to grow. They're direct sown. So you're putting them right in the soil at the right time when the soil's warmed up. Um, and you'll always get a, an abundance of beans. For folks that are a little more uh, adventurous or a little more advanced, you might try growing tomatoes or uh, hot peppers, that kind of thing. And those require an earlier start. So you're starting indoors. So you wanna, you know, a, a little grow light station. But of course, you know, that's something you can put together a, a little DIY project um, and grow your own seeds indoors. So typically, for example, tomatoes, you're starting those about six to eight weeks before, before the last frost. So our last frost in our region is about May 20th, so you kind of work back to that. But I always tell folks, you know, start start small, start easy, and you'll kind of get the bug, and you'll hopefully continue. Incredible. So tell us about some upcoming events that you guys have. Yeah, so we're really excited. We have um, our Innisfil CD Saturday event. Um, just to tell you what CD Saturdays are, it's a, a phenomenon, really, that happens in communities across Canada uh, this time of year, so late winter, early spring. And it basically is a gathering of new and experienced gardeners, uh, folks interested in their health and in the environment. So we have vendors and speakers, children's activities, a, a whole bunch of, of really fun things. So that's happening on Saturday, April 1st at the Lakeshore branch of the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library. And it's from uh, 10 to two and it's free admission. 
and we are asking folks to bring uh, food donation or cash donation to the Troy Scott Community Fridges, which is a Neighbors Helping Neighbors program in Innisfil. Um, yeah, so if folks come out to that, there's vendors selling seeds, of course, uh, as well as like habitats for wildlife, natural handmade uh, body products, um, natural soil amendments, that kind of thing. Kids' activities include an interactive garden-themed story time, and we have a hack lab in our, in our library, so they'll be doing a take-home project there. Okay. And just lots of ways to be inspired. We have the Simcoe County Master Gardeners on site, and they're answering all your, all your gardening questions. So if you have vegetable gardening questions, or you want to learn how to conserve water on your property, or you want to prune a tree, they'll, they'll, they'll be there to answer your questions. Wow. And then we're really excited. We have a, a speaker series that's happening throughout the day, and we have a native plant expert and author, Lorraine Johnson, presenting. So we're pretty excited about that. That's incredible. So much going on. So much, yeah. Wow, that's such a fun-filled event. Mm -hmm. So um, how can people attend? Is it, is it free? Is it you yeah. know, buy yeah. tickets? Yeah, it's free. So you just show up. And like I said, if you want to bring a food or cash donation for the fridges, that would be awesome. But it's completely free. There's lots to do. You don't have to spend a penny to have <laughs> fun uh, unless you know you want to buy some, some seeds. But the seed library is also reopening at that event. So that's your chance to try out some seeds without the pressure of buying them. So yeah, I'd really encourage folks to come out and, and check it out. Well, can you just tell um, our audience how to get in touch with you or, or how to join the Innisfil Seed Library and, and test out their own skills? Sure, yeah, like we host seed packing parties every uh, sort of late winter. So we've just done one in February. There's an upcoming one uh, happening. So it's basically a bunch of volunteers get together. We repack seeds. It's, it's really a lot of fun and chatting and getting excited about the upcoming season. So if you're interested in getting involved, I'd definitely check out the website, innisfilseedlibrary.ca. Uh, you can also email us, the contact is on, on there, and find out how to, how to get involved. Perfect, well Bridget, thank you so much for being with us today and so thank excited you. for your event. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for more Info Simcoe.